Hello everyone, Bloody Mail here, and welcome to the next Let's Play. This time we have Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. And, as always, the first area of Dracula's Castle has got to be pumping and ready to get your blood flowing. So let's see if Aria of Sorrow fares. I would say yes, Aria Sorrow definitely meets the standard for a good first music. And um, tell you what, this is when the games truly start to become their own. This is what uh, the RPG Castlevanias are all about. If Circle of the Moon was great with gameplay and great with audio, but a little lacking in the graphic department and also the balancing of difficulty, and Harmony of Dissonance was a little too easy, great in the graphic department, horrible in the audio quality, and a little, still a little bit bad with difficulty balancing in terms of being too easy and too uh, abusive, then Aria Sorrow is the perfect harmony, the perfect balance between the two games. It is definitely the most polished GBA title for the Castlevania um, Metroid-esque series, and um, personally my favorite GPA title, probably uh, in any GPA game, to be honest. Lots, lots of change in this game, and uh, one thing to note is the, is the equipment is different. You have only your weapon, your body armor, and an accessory. That's it. It's very simplified, and yet the stats still are there. You got attack, defense, and the four strength, constitution, intelligence, and luck. That's all the same. Uh, the biggest difference, though, and the coolest difference is that once again the magic system has changed. We do not use DSS cards, we do not use spell fusion and find uh, spell books, and, and we do not have any sub weapons at all. But this time what we have is enemy souls. So any enemy in the game has a chance to drop their soul when you kill them. And, uh, and then you can use that soul. So that um, allows for some pretty crazy replay value, some fun end game grinding if that's your thing, or collect collectathon. And uh, it just a, uh, a nice breath of fresh air for a third game in the GPA title, or the fourth game in the uh, Castle Royd series. And um, lots to say about this game, but we got our first boss battle already, so uh, let's see how uh, the bosses are. No problem, but first boss, you know, not much to expect, so that's A-OK. -okay. One thing to note about this game is that um, it's actually set in the future, which is a first for the Castlevania series, and although you really don't feel that you're in the future, because it's still a pretty um, European type of castle, there is futuristic moments, such as the gear you get and the uh, references that you see. But also, the sky is very blue, uh, you're actually inside of a solar eclipse, which is actually a, a pretty cool change of pace, instead of just being in a, a foggy castle on a mountainside in the forest. So, I like that aspect. But yes, so souls that you can get, you can get a bullet soul, which is a if your weapon, a offensive type of soul, a guardian soul, which allows you to summon something, have a familiar, transform into something, yeah, transform into something. And finally, an enchantment soul, which is basically like a passive modifier. So that's where your extra um, accessories or equipment, gear, if you will, come from. What I really like about this game, and I'm not going to grind for any souls, by the way, unless I actually need to to complete something. Oh, there we go. Bat soul. So we just got a bat soul after killing a lot of bats. And instead of using the winged spear, we got this kind of like um, aura type of so sonar attack. And uh, also, some soul candles appear in the game, which are kind of game progression items. Basically, your relics of uh, past games. Because there actually is one other soul type I forgot to mention. This is the Guardian Soul, or the, I'm sorry, the Ability Soul, which are gray. And they allow you to do uh, abilities like slide and double jump and 
I got Gravekeeper in the Merman area, called, which lets me do a back dash. You can't forward dash in this game, so they kind of balance that out. So we've got Flying Armor. Falling speed slows down and jumping distance increases. So I can equip Flying Armor. And you can see when I jump and use it, it slows me down. So definitely pretty cool, and there's a lot of souls and a lot of different ways to use things. Um, another thing to note, a difference of Harmony to Dissonance, is that there's no aura. No annoying blue aura in this game, because the game is just naturally more vibrant. Soma is a uh, white trench coat wearing um, character, and uh, is easy to identify with in the game, and uh, doesn't blend in at all, so it's perfect. You don't need that aura. And I also like that you can control him a lot better. As you can see, you can go back and forth in the air. Plus, um, following Sifting the Night, but in the right way, you are a swordsman of, of a, well, at least you use swords and you don't use a uh, classic whip. That's great because um, it once again gives another breath of fresh air and you um, are able to use a lot, wide, 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 wide variety of weapons. So uh, we're back with these sword te techniques that uh, Alucard, and this is actually kind of the position that Alucard, this is like the animation that Alucard used in Sifting the Night. And uh, I really like Soma as a character in this game. Um, so, he's also a lot easier of a name to pronounce than uh, Orange Juice is, so uh, I like that as well. So you can see, there's the eclipse in it. There's kind of like the moon, I think, in the background, but it's orange because it's kind of like eclipsed. And it's like a bluish, kind of weird, surreal um, sky with lighting. And I like that. It kind of makes you feel that it's a little bit different type of environment. You're not just in a typical castle. So here we see our first progression um, challenge. You need the flying armor to get across here, but we don't have a double jump just yet. And you know it's going to come. So you can see this uh, bat spell is actually pretty useful. And uh, like I said, I like the detail in this, um, in this game. Uh, because unlike... Harmony Dissonance and Cynthia of the Night, this game, there is no second castle, and I could ruin that for you already. It's just one big castle. However, the areas are gigantic, very in-depth, um, large, and there's a lot more areas, so it really balances out in the right way, because that castle we're using thing got kind of old, and personally, Harmony Dissonance Castle is my least favorite of all the Castlevanias. <laughs> So, following up, I think, like I said, I really feel that the uh, they directed this game right, because they said, well, we know Sifty the Night is a hit, we want to follow Sifty the Night's footsteps, but Harmony and Dissonance tried too hard, and it showed. Now we have this um, sword-wielding character, kind of has that similar elegant feel, but he's allowed to. He's a high school, Japanese high school student. He was just going to go to the uh, shrine to gaze upon the solar eclipse with his childhood friend slash girlfriend Mina and um, then he just fell and blacked out and now he finds himself in a castle rising inside of the solar eclipse so definitely a unique storyline even though it's still kind of cheesy Castlevania style which is what I want all right got an accessory scarf one better defense all righty all right and finally making it back from that little detour that was just for a scarf, believe it or not. And I guess for some other areas, we'll get it. Way more defense. Great. That's great. Um, another thing to note about this game that's just a beautiful... Oh, nice! Throw hand grenades. Don't mind if I do. So you see, that's when you start to see, oh, it is futuristic. I can throw hand grenades now. Not something you could do in other games. Cool. We'll use it. You know, usually I, I, I like a soul if I get it in, in, in this game, but I'll just use different souls as I get them for a little bit, unless they're completely, completely um, impractical. But for now, I like it. So, um, But yeah, what I was saying is that this game allows you to get static experience points. That means every enemy gets a certain amount of experience points every single time, no matter what your level is. That is great. It, it lets you grind for levels if you want, and also if you want to go really high up for completion's sake, you can do that as well. And it's not a complete torture or literally impossible to do. I believe on Sifting the Night, in order to get to level 99, it would take about three weeks of constant grinding because um, come about level 65, everything in the game gives you one experience point. This is wonderful, plus I got splash damage on this grenade. This is fun. I usually don't get the uh, grenade soul, so that's pretty cool. 
And you see there's a lot of detail in this game. Um, it's not quite as um, graphically enhanced as Homie Dissonant, believe it or not. But it still looks really good, and in my eyes, the way that they do the design of things, I think it looks better. But technically, the sprite, my, uh, some of the sprites, a little bit smaller. But I like that, a little bit more Circle of the Moon style, more Nathan Grave style. Once again, as you can see, uh, here's another place. Looks like we can definitely go higher. They kind of let you know because there's two torches up there, and you can kind of see the start of more geometry up there, so you know. Um, by the map, and yes, the music doesn't turn off when you uh, go into the map, which is nice. This is just one big castle. And it doesn't turn off when you go into pause screen, which I really like. A lot of variety of enemies. Look at how many enemy varieties we fought already. It's fantastic. And the game will continue the whole way. It never starts to damper down. It gets better and better as we go on. It is just a fantastic marvel of a uh, GBA masterpiece, in my opinion. Oh, another way. A sword that we can't get to. We'll have to do some sort of aerial slide or aerial crouch move. No idea. I've never really heard of that in any of the games. So we can go right or down. Oh, I like right better. Oh, this music's so good. Oh, I just bring back so many memories. And uh, what's great about this game um, is that I actually have a little bit more remember it, like, like memory about this game. Um, for some reason, I think this is one of the most played uh, Castlevania, Metroidvania. When I say Castlevania, I, I just mean the Metroidvania games. Um, I think I have played, I think I played this one almost the most, for some reason. So, uh, look, I got rotten meat. Don't think I want to eat that, though. And uh, with the, for that said, I can have a little bit more information, a little bit more lore, as opposed to pure reactionary-based uh, commentary, which, like I said in Harmony Dissonance, I, there's nothing wrong with that. I like experiencing Harmony Dissonance with you guys at the same time. But uh, this one, I can be a little bit more of a tour guide this time around. I like to change it up, I guess. Breakable walls are back. They were kind of non-existent in Harmony Dissonance. And um, you can also only hold up to nine of an item, so you can't have like 99 potions or such in any of the games. And this game is not is not uh, <laughs> harder than Circle of the Moon, but it's not it, but it's definitely um, harder than Harmony of Dissonance, and probably harder, definitely harder than Symphony of the Night. So we could definitely die. It will be our first Metrovania death. Not to jinx me, I probably just did, but that's okay. All right, we only have one more spot to go. Alright, a little bit of a plot dump already. So this is... We're in Dracula's castle in the year 2035. But Dracula died in 1999. Dracula always re-resurrects after a hundred years because of the, the urge of chaos and darkness in the hearts of humans and men. Uh, mankind. Women. Children. Anybody. Animals. Whatever. But I guess the... The clan that banished him in 1999 ended the regeneration cycle by throwing him into an eclipse. Not sure how that exactly they, they pulled that off, but um, they did. And uh, apparently in this year, the prophecy says that um, 
a person will inherit all of Dracula's powers. So I wonder who that person could be. All sorts of crazy shit going on already in the first part. The next part will tackle on the next area. See you guys next time.